So this is the audience participation portion of the program. What are the most prevalent storage technologies out there on the grid today? Anybody? Pumped hydro, good. You got to speak in unison. And anything else? So the, the, the two, you got it right, pumped hydro and compressed air energy storage are the, the pre prevalent energy storage technologies on the grid at the moment. And there's um, hundreds of megawatts of compressed air energy storage, which is essentially finding an abandoned salt cavern or natural gas storage area and pumping air into it. Um, or with pumped hydro, it's pumping water up a hill and pumping water down a hill when you, when you need the energy from that, from, from that, from that uh, previously pumped water. Uh, that's, unfortunately, when you're talking about compressed air energy storage, it's geographically destined. You, you, can't, you have to have a big reservoir low and a big reservoir high. Utilities like it because it lasts for 50 to 80 years and has a very, very predictable operations and maintenance. It's a big hole in the ground. It's something easy to maintain. Um, just, uh, we, we actually, own, we, we dodged the bullet of having the CEO of this company on uh, the panel. It's a company called Gravity Power, and they drill a, an enormous hole in the ground. It's about 6,000 feet deep, and they fill it with water, and they seal it with a technology yet un undiscovered, um, and they fill it with water from a source as yet undiscovered. Um, but it is also a variation of uh, pumped hydro. And you'll see that this is a, um, an artist's rendering. And in fact, um, the major employment opportunities in energy storage at the grid level today are in artist's renderings. <laughs> so I was, I was asked to um, provide a little bit of the technology that's out there and some of the players. And, and this is absolutely just a partial list. But these are some of the storage technologies that are available. Each technology, each chemistry has its own um, output, discharge, and power profile. And you, you may see these charts. In fact, it's by law, if you're presenting on energy storage, you have to show this chart. By law, if you're presenting on energy storage, you have to show this chart. But what's important is, are, are you, do you have this? Because that's, OK, all right. Um, What's important is that energy storage is not some monolithic application. There's a lot of different types of energy storage, um, ranging from power quality, uh, power um, voltage regulation. You have to keep the uh, grid humming, uh, I, I should know this offhand, uh, between 59.6 hertz and 60.1 60 hertz in California. And bad things happen if you don't. And there's a whole market of keeping that frequency at that level. But the predominant electrochemical um, method for energy storage today are sodium sulfur, NAS batteries, uh, typically from NGK. And this is uh, an example of one that's uh, not currently uh, in flame. And uh, th that's, that's uh, libelous. They, they've shipped hundreds of megawatts, uh, mostly to Japan, right? But this is a standard large-scale utility-scale battery, and it's expensive. And gentlemen on this panel are looking for applications and ways to lower the cost of these types of batteries. Um, California has a 30% renewable portfolio standard um, by 33 by 2020, 33 by 2033, some arbitrary number picked by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, but a really good question is, can we get to 33% renewables without energy, without energy resources on the grid? I, I wanted to give you a, a list of uh, profitable utility scale energy storage companies. The other thing I wanted to talk about is we, as, a Silicon, as Silicon Valley denizens and venture capitalists and entrepreneurs, we, we are in love with technology. And we think that the answers to many of our problems lie in the periodic table. And I would suggest that the tables that we really need to be at are in Washington or at the CPUC or at the FERC, forgive me, um, and, and at lawmakers. I would suggest, and, and I'm, I'm putting this out there for the, the CEOs to savage, that if you had energy storage today at zero dollars per watt and you brought it to a utility and said, here is my zero dollar per watt battery, 
they would say, thank you very much. What the heck do I do with this? They don't, because energy storage has not been a traditional part of the network, it doesn't, it's not load, it's not transmission, it's not generation, it's something else, and it doesn't fit neatly into their regulatory world view. And so I, I've been doing this for about eight years, and I, I, I myself have tried to lay off using the word holy grail game changer or linchpin, um, but that's the, 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 the terms that are typically used with energy storage, and I would say that none of that is true. By the way, this is not a whole, the holy grail is on the left, and that is the, does anybody know what that is on the right? That is the holy hand grenade, excellent, excellent. <laughs> So you spent, I know where you've, your misspent youth has been. In, um, anyway, so I would suggest that energy storage, when it becomes affordable and when it fits regulatorily into our system, is just another tool in, in, that, in that energy mix that we have. Um, and so I, I have a tendency to be less than optimistic. Um, that's mostly because I, I spend a lot of time getting fibbed to by press releases and PR people and CEOs. 